Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. UN Climate Panel publishes major report on adaptation. Volunteer teachers, health worker killed in the Philippines. UN Security Council expands arms embargo on Houthis. And Latin American scholars refuse ties with Israel. We begin with a report on climate change. The impact of climate change has been far greater, more frequent and disruptive than previously understood. Humans and natural systems are already being pushed beyond their limit to cope. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the second volume of its landmark sixth assessment report on February 28th. Authored by 270 scientists, the study focuses on impact, risk, vulnerability, and adaptation. It states that over 3.5 billion people, or over 45% of the world's population, are living in areas highly vulnerable to climate change. Between 2010 and 2020, 15 times more people died from floods, droughts, and storms in South Asia, Africa, and Central and South America. Not only is climate change causing ecological damage, it has led to displacement and threats to food systems and water supplies. If temperature rise crosses the 1.5 degrees Celsius threshold, then many changes could become irreversible. 14% of land species will be at a very high risk of extinction. 8% of global farmland could become unusable. Coral reefs could decline by 70 to 90% and there could be thawing of permafrost. By 2050, over a billion people in coastal areas will be at risk of climate hazards. The IPCC report points to large gaps in adaptation due to lack of funding, political commitment, information, and a sense of urgency. It also notes loss and damages inflicted on nature and people due to climate change. Despite consistent appeals by poor and vulnerable countries, the global north has refused to properly address climate finance and loss and damage. We now move on to the Philippines, where two volunteer teachers, a community health worker and two indigenous people were killed by the armies last week. They were killed while returning from a community visit in New Bataan in the Davao de Oro province. The Philippines Army later claimed that five people had been killed in an armed encounter with the banned New People's Army, which is an armed wing of the Communist Party of the Philippines. However, rights group Karapatan stated on March 1st that the killings constituted a massacre. It stated that five people were civilians and not rebels or combatants. Karapatan has denounced the massacre as the latest in a long history of fascist attacks on Lumad schools, teachers and communities. They have been violently targeted and displaced under President Duterte's so-called anti-insurgency campaign against suspected communists. Estimates suggest that over 400 people have been killed in such operations. Lumad schools have been attacked and shut down on claims of alleged ties to the NPA. Among those killed in last week's attack was Chad Arol Bok. He was among seven teachers who were arrested during a raid on a Lumad Bakwit school in Cebu, which is an indigenous school, last year. They were released three months later after the trumped-up charges against them were dismissed for lack of evidence. Karapatan has said that Book continued to be targeted and red-tagged by Duterte's counter-insurgency agency, the ntf LCAC. In our next story, the United Nations Security Council has imposed extended arms embargo on all members of Yemen's Houthi movement. The resolution was passed with 11 votes in favor and four abstentions on February 28th. Monday's resolution was brought by the United Arab Emirates, which is part of the U.S.-backed Saudi-led military coalition that has invaded Yemen. Now in its seventh year, the war on Yemen has directly and indirectly killed around 377,000 people. An estimated 70% of those deaths were of children. There has been an escalation of fighting between the Houthis and the Saudi coalition in recent weeks. Houthi leader Muhammad Ali al-Houthi condemned the United Nations resolution on Monday, saying that it had ignored the coalition's crimes. He added that any arms embargo which did not apply to the alliance had no value. Despite pledging to withdraw from the Yemen war, the United States has recently also deployed arms to the UAE. 
The UNSC resolution also describes the Houthis as a terrorist group. Norway abstained from the vote over concerns that using such terminology without a clear definition would have a negative impact on efforts for a political solution. It also said that it was worried about the unintended humanitarian consequences of the new language. Millions of people in Yemen are facing famine with conditions set to worsen as the World Food Programme faces a funding shortfall. And finally, over 220 Latin American academics from 15 countries have pledged to reject ties with Israel. They have committed to refuse participation in academic exchanges and collaborations with the Israeli state and complicit institutions. The academics have also pledged to decline funding or sponsorship. They have released a joint statement to this effect based on the guidelines set by the Palestinian Committee for Academic and Cultural Boycott. The statement is in response to a call by Palestinian society, including the Palestinian Federation of University Teachers and Employees Unions. Signatories have also called on their universities to suspend cooperation with, the, with their, quote, uh, Israeli accomplices. They have also urged their ministries of education to suspend cooperation with complicit universities and Israel. The Palestinian BDS movement has highlighted the key role played by such institutions in developing, maintaining, implementing and justifying Israeli apartheid. These institutions also hold a uniquely close relationship with the Israeli security military establishment and Israel's arm producer. Hundreds of academics, academic departments, unions, centers worldwide have issued statements in solidarity with Palestinians. Many have advocated BDS and most have recognized Israel's settler, colonial and apartheid regime as being the cause of the violence. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you very much.